Hello, this is Matteo with another WordLift tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the service markup. Service is pretty vague, right? If you're in business, you are providing some sort of service. Even if you're in e-commerce, maybe you are providing some sort of service. And so you can really leverage this schema type because you want to tell Google and Bing as many information as possible around what you offer. You don't necessarily just want more traffic, but traffic with the right intent. And if Google understands profoundly what service you're offering, it is going to put it in front of exactly the people that are looking for that service. Now, for the purpose of today's demo, I'm going to use my own website. And on my own website, I have many, very many landing pages. And today we're going to work on the Business Storytelling Coach page. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and edit this page. Right now, this page has a, a strong markup. It has an FAQ page. Uh, it's, uh, um, it has some content here that has been classified, so some entities that have been marked up. And please pardon, I'm still using the classic editor. I, I really need to uh, upgrade, but I'm kind of used for these pages just to use the, the classic editor. So we want to go to entity types and to the full list of entity types and just look for service. If we were using Gutenberg, uh, this would have been even faster because we would have a, a search field here where we could d directly find service. Now, when we add service, we just need to scroll down and we need to scroll down at the end of our content. We have the regular properties. As you can see here, I've also added some the same as we have the FAQs that are already set up here. And now we can go ahead and fill up the service part. So the, first of all, you can add as many rows as you need for the areas you serve. Now, how would you highlight the areas that you serve? Like for instance, by going Wikidata and saying Italy. All right, so Italy, country in Southern Europe. You get this URL and you add it here. And let's say you had Spain and France and so on, you could add all of those. Or like in my case, I'm interested in offering my services online and so I offer them worldwide and so in my case I'm just going to overwrite this I'm going to overwrite this and have worldwide services now in terms of audience if you know exactly who your audience is let's say vice presidents of marketing, let's say millennials or Generation X, or let's say gamers, you can add this in. But another thing you can do is actually use the taxonomies that Google is already familiar with, like for instance, beauty products and services, or in my case, business services. So I'm just gonna head over and as an audience, I'm just gonna add business services. Now, if I had a complex website with many different types of services, let's say advertising services, SEO services, design services, I would divide them into categories. Right now, this doesn't apply to me as the next field doesn't apply to me. It is related to means that, for instance, I have a number of child services and then there is a parent service. So let's say that I would have SEO as a parent service and then semantic SEO or link building and so on as child services of this SEO parent. But a property that it's interesting here is, is similar to. And in this case, we want to show what are the sibling products, what are the products that are similar one to each other. And we could say that my presentation and public speaking coaching is similar to my storytelling coaching. So let's go ahead and select this one. Then this is very important. You want to highlight who is the provider of these services. So I want to say that these services are provided by me, Matteo Cassese. And so I'm going to highlight this here as a provider. This together with area served is one of the most important fields in the service market.
Now we want to add the service type and I would say, you know, generically, this is a, a coaching service. So I want to be here as broad as possible and I want to be very clear about the output. And I would say the output is business, storytelling skills. So something that is very narrow, very, very precise. Now we've finished describing the general offer of my um, of my service but now we can go into the economic part of the offer and we can have a look at the numbers and let's say that I have a price I could also talk about my price but first I need to add a URL now the URL you want to add is this one is the same URL of, of the page and then you want to say something about the availability my coaching services are definitely in stock right now. And then you might want to add, if this applies to you, a price and you have very detailed instructions on how to formulate this price in the way that it will be best recognized as proper schema price, price currency and price validity. At this point, we are ready to go and update this page. This is actually a live page. So we can just go ahead and update this page. And then uh, we can have a look at the validator as soon as this checks out. And we can have a look at the validator and have a look at this schema. As I said before, this schema is helping Google to better understand what is the right intent to bring users to our website. And we want to get this right because we are not just in the business of getting traffic. We are getting the in the business of getting traffic that converts this. This is the core of the type of SEO that WordLift allows you to do. So let's have a look at these these results and let's have a look we have a service, the service is coaching, the area served is worldwide and so on and so forth. And we have everything here integrated with the structured data that was already present in this page. So I hope I convinced you that if you are in business, you need to add the service markup to your website. And the best way to do it is with WordLift. Thank you so much for watching.